When the Pittsburgh Steelers stood pat and made no deals at the 2023 trade deadline, was that an indicator that this team is kind of thrown in the towel and just riding with whatever and just saying, ah, hey, it is what it is? I don't think that that's the correct assumption to have if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Welcome back to Mike Drop Sports, everybody. I'm Jason. I appreciate you guys stopping through. Let's dive into that. Let's dive into this Titans-Steelers game, Thursday night football. Big time matchup for your Pittsburgh Steelers. But let's get back to this no-move thing at the trade deadline and what the Pittsburgh Steelers thought process possibly was. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers believe in the roster that they have and that they assembled throughout the offseason. I think that they're just kind of looking downhill here and saying that we just need to get things together and get things to work and get things to look like they did in the preseason to where this team was loose fast and free and that's what we've discussed on this channel and I think that that's what the Steelers are really aiming for not to mention that the prices at the trade deadline guys are astronomical because they know that other teams that are trying to get rid of pieces Know that other teams are usually with their backs against the wall at times. And they're trying to add that one piece in order to get over the hump. And I don't think the Steelers are that kind of team right now that they need a piece in order to make a Super Bowl. Or in order to be a decent team. I think that they can do both of those things without making a trade. Because the roster has some good talent on it. And especially, uh, I know a lot of people are worried about the defensive backfield. But I think that the Steelers can still do some exotic things in the backfield. Patrick Peterson, just because he's in the cornerback room, doesn't mean that you can't move him around and shuffle him around. That doesn't mean that you can't shuffle other guys around. That doesn't mean that you can't use Rush, who just came from the Chiefs practice squad, and just put him in situationally. I think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are really committed now to Joey Porter Jr., which is a plus. And, and there's several other things that you can do. I know Minka Fitzpatrick could be out for an extended period of time. However, hopefully he'll be back sooner than later. But you have Dermonte Casey. You have Keanu Neal. You have players back there that can be serviceable. And with the right scheme and the right environment, I think that these players could shine, guys. And especially Patrick Peterson, who played safety with the Vikings at times and moved around and did different things. I think that you could let Patrick Peterson do that when you have Joey Porter Jr. out there on the field, out there on the island. And use Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace, when he comes back from his injury, which I think he will be this Thursday night. I think that you can use those guys as a mixture. The rest of the, Joey Porter Jr. on one side and the rest of everybody else mixing it up, really trying to control the other two-thirds of the field. I think that that's what they really need to do. And I think that the Steelers know that. And I think that they really trust Joey Porter Jr. now after seeing him play. And his pedigree and his, his draft hype, I think, are really proven to be accurate. And I think Joey Porter Jr. still has some things to work on, guys. But I think that Joey Porter Jr. can be that complete superstar-type corner in the NFL. And I think that he's going to have a long and prosperous career. And I think that Joey Porter Jr., if he remains healthy throughout this season, could really start to shine and really start to make a big, big difference on this Pittsburgh Steelers team as he's already had an impact on this team. But I think it could be even more. And I think that we're just starting to scratch the, surf the surface on Joey Porter Jr.'s potential. And like I said, whenever these teams are trying to trade, and yes, the Steelers were linked to, um, what was his name, Justin Johnson, the Bears cornerback, or no, I'm sorry, Jalen Johnson, sorry, the Bears cornerback. I know the Steelers were linked to him, but what the Bears probably want? Uh, a second, a third, and if you're the Steelers, why would you make a deal like that whenever you know that you already have enough talent in the cornerback room to do what you need to do right now at this point? You don't need that one piece that's going to make you an instant Super Bowl contender. You don't have to have it. And if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, why would you give up all that type of draft capital and not even know if you're going to have that guy next year? It's kind of a pointless thing to do. And I know that they may be able to scratch the surface elsewhere, but again, these prices are going to be super high. And as a fan, I don't think that you should be disappointed in what the Steelers did. And that is nothing, because sometimes... Nothing is better than something because it could have really screwed up the future for the Pittsburgh Steelers if they weren't careful. 
They could have screwed it up in draft capital. It could have screwed it up financially and created a, a cap disaster. You never know how these situations play out down the, down the road. And if you're one of these guys in the front office, you really got to be looking away, looking the far ahead, like you're playing chess, several moves ahead to be able to be good at that job, to be able to be good at building a roster. And yes, some teams take the approach of win now, get everybody in the building. But to have long-term success, to have a, a steady, big-time franchise that wins a lot of football games, that contends for a lot of championships, you can't just throw all your cards in all the time and ask for some new ones. You can't do that because it sets you back a lot of the times, many years, and it's really, really hard to get all that shit back on track. And, and the Steelers are that type of franchise. And I know it's been frustrating as a Steeler fan because, man, I've been frustrated too, guys. I've been super frustrated with this team for several seasons. I've been really, really frustrated since they were 11-0 and collapsed and lost in the first round of the playoffs to the Browns and Baker Mayfield. Since that day, I've been really salty with this football team. But I think that... We're the fans of a steady franchise, and I know that that's hard to take sometimes, and you want to see results, but I think we need to all be patient and just realize that there is a master plan to this, and hopefully this roster that they've built right now, hopefully this roster starts to blossom and grow. As we talked about on the channel the other day, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we talked about this team starting to grow organically. This coaching staff starting to take the uh, handcuffs off of these guys and really just letting them play and do what they what got them to the NFL. That's what these guys need to be allowed to do. And I think that gets us into the next topic where we're going into this Titans game. And that's what the Steelers have to do, guys. And it's a very simple formula. Allow these guys to play. Allow them to be loose. Allow them to be free. And until you do that and let them crawl out from underneath this rock, this constant pressure of getting this offense back on track or just making those couple slight adjustments on defense to be elite, I think that the Steelers have to have a game to where they come out with zero pressure. And this could be the game. And I keep saying it. I think Thursday night football could be a gift and a curse. It sets you up sometimes for a mini, a mini buy right after the Thursday night game to where your team's going to gain some rest and hopefully get some more of its healthy players back. Also, it could be that opportunity for your team to scrap all the the, the big-time game plans, all the uh, crazy amount of things that they have to remember, the overcomplication of football. Football should be pure. Football should be easy. Football should be fun. And I think that that's what this coaching staff has to allow this team to do this week. And that is just that. Play and have fun and do what got you to the NFL. Use your athleticism. Use your street smarts, really. Use your field smarts. Use your instinct. And don't worry about all the X's and O's all the time. Line up. Cover your guy, do your job, and smash someone in the mouth every play and hit hard and allow that other team to know that the Pittsburgh Steelers are back, they're loose, and they're ready to play. And I think that that's the only remedy, that's the only thing that can fix this Steelers team right now is they sit 4-3, and three, holding a couple tiebreakers within the division. So it's not all doom and gloom here at all. And I think if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and you have the personnel that you do, I think it's time to start getting a little bit exotic. I think it's time to start allowing these guys to move around, shuffle around, and just find the formula, find the, the chemistry that works. And I think the offensive line needs to have some shuffling around on it. I think that that's imperative. Kenny is supposed to play. Is he going to be well enough to be able to make the throws? Is he going to be able to be strong enough without so much pain to drive the football downfield to where he's had some trouble doing that at times? Is he going to be able to focus and be able to get through his progressions and not worry about getting his clock clean because he has that rib, rib injury? Those are the things that we need to be looking for. Those are the things that are going to play big-time roles in this football game. And the Pittsburgh Steelers defense 
in general. They have to come out and play, and they have to be the Steelers' defense of old. They have to be very smash mouth. They have to be very, very aggressive, and they have to get Will Levis into a compromising situation to where they're forcing him into a lot of mistakes as a rookie, throwing things at him that he has never seen. Throwing things at him that are so exotic that he's like, what is going on here? Like, what? <laughs> you know, where he's too super confused. That is the key for the Steelers' defense. Don't let Will Levis get comfortable. Don't allow him to start just reeling off big throw after big throw and not having those contested throws that he has to make and put in the right spot. If you're the Steelers, and I say week after week, you need to be aggressive at the line, especially guys like Joey Porter, Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace. Those guys have to be super aggressive and have to really play that man-on-man -man and rough somebody up at the line of scrimmage because I think that's going to allow that Pittsburgh Steelers pass rush to really cause disruption with this Tennessee Titans team. And that is where we need to be, guys. It's a real simple formula, and I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of stuff and say the Steelers need to do this, the Steelers need to do that. It's just a simple thing. And if you're a Steelers fan, you're about to see, hopefully, a Mike Tomlin-led team that has the handcuffs taken off of them and a Mike Tomlin-led team that's going to be allowed to do what they know how to do, and that's play football at a super high level. And that's going to be with excitement. And hopefully the crowd at Ackershire Stadium is there in full force, fired up and getting crazy. Because honestly, that's what this team needs. So here I am. I'm calling out all fans. If you can get to the game, you can afford it. You can get there. You have the time. Get there and be loud. Be crazy. And make it an environment that is very, very hard for Will Levis, for DeAndre Hopkins, for that Tennessee Titans team. To be able to to be able to withstand, and then last week you had that uh, what was his name the Jaguars safety uh, that grabbed the terrible towel whipping it around. Use some of that as inspiration, and I know think people think that that's corny and that's stupid and that that's just it's nothing and it doesn't work. I think you're wrong, and I think that if you're a football team, you have to find motivation from places. And I think if you're a football player that's a good football player, you use those types of things to motivate you to be able to be more aggressive, to be able to stand up and rise to the occasion. And I think that's what this Pittsburgh Steelers team has to use, things of that nature. Use that these use these things that are being said about you that you're no good. Your your quarterback sucks. Your defense isn't as great as you think it is. Joey Porter Jr. isn't as good as he thinks. Patrick Peterson's old. Without Minka, you can't do anything. The offense can't score a point. Fire Matt Canada. It's time to start using all of that as motivation if you're a Pittsburgh Steeler. It's time to start digging deep and finding what gets you fired up. And I think you have to come excited if you're a Steeler. And I think that that's what exactly you have to do. And some may think that that's whatever, corny or whatever, or cliche, whatever you want to call it, guys. But I don't care because I think I'm right. And I think that that's exactly what this team needs to do. And if you're Mike Tomlin and you're listening to this by chance, which you probably aren't, I think that you need to relay that kind of type of message to your team. And I think that that's what has to be done. Well, guys, let's wrap this up. It's a short week. We're not getting, like I said, into super um, complicated X's and O's because, again, I don't think it's what needs to happen. And I think that this, this team is going to come out and be a totally different team. And I think you're going to see something special start Thursday night in the city of Pittsburgh. And everybody's going to be pleasantly surprised and hopefully back on top of the Steelers bandwagon and really pulling for this team for the home stretch of the 2023 season. And let's start getting towards those playoffs and start really getting things fired up in the city of Pittsburgh. All right, guys, let's go. Uh, let's break this down. Let's get this over with for the end uh, for today. And uh, we'll put another episode out tomorrow. Again, we're going to be doing the live episodes. So please join us for those. Ask questions. Um, get, make comments. Get the, get the chat fired up and create some good conversation. Um, voice your frustrations. Voice your opinions. Voice uh, some of the good things you see the Steelers doing. Let's hear everything that you got to say. And uh, I'd be happy to talk about it 
with you. So come on over to Mike Drop Sports tomorrow, uh, especially post game. I'll let uh, everybody know uh, somehow on the community section uh, if we're going to do a pregame. But more importantly, post game about 25 minutes, 30 minutes after the game's conclusion, we'll we'll start that live session and really get things kicked off here on Mike Drop Sports as we continue to grow this channel. If you haven't been subscribed already, I want you to go ahead. And and crank that little red subscribe button. Uh, and thank you. I appreciate it. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, keep coming back. And I hope you're enjoying the content. And I hope you're enjoying uh, the 2023 season as a Steelers fan. Even though it's frustrating at times. But it's a hell of a ride. And it could end up being uh, a pretty damn fun one uh, once all the smoke settles. Until next time, guys. Peace.